So AMD just recently released the 2700 series of Ryzen CPUs. At the same MSRP, they released the 1700 CPUs. This makes me wonder if it's worth it to get the 2700X at more than $100 higher price than the 1700, which had such impressive performance, now priced at just above what one might consider the budget processor range. Well, I have one right here to compare with the 1700 that Perry White started with. Hey there! When I built Perry White, I had every intention of following the upgrade path AMD implied, with AM4 being in use until at least 2020. They aren't planning a socket change until DDR5 and other future technologies start to hit the market. They have stated that opposed to Intel's tick-tock update pattern, AMD is planning on being tock 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 implying that the 3000 and maybe even 4000 series CPUs will be viable on the B350 and X370 chipset motherboards. I started with arguably the best value R7 available, the 1700. It performed as expected, keeping in mind the cooling limitations of the setup I've been using it in. Uh, and as everyone who set up an early Ryzen system knows, uh, there was a serious need for BIOS updates before I got the best numbers I could out of it. Uh, if you're interested in how those numbers turned out, uh, you can check out that video uh, right here. Uh, so now onto the first talk AMD has provided in the form of the 2700X, uh, arguably the best value in the new series. Uh, I've run a fresh set of benchmarks using the current setup with uh, the newest BIOS updates and drivers, so let's swap out the chip and see what kind of improvement we get. We swapped out the processor, spent a few hours overclocking and benchmarking, and I have some results for you. Now, it is important to remember that we are working with a near worst case scenario for overclocking. The Inwin 301 has notoriously poor airflow, and I'm working with what would be considered a mainstream motherboard with the B350 chipset, considering that at the time of the build, there were no X370 MATX options on the market. Even now, there's only one available, and we've moved on to the X470 in the new motherboard space, which also has no MATX options. So keeping all of that in mind, I was only able to get all cores to run stable at within the comfortable temperatures at 3.6 GHz on the 1700, which was a bump of 400 MHz from the natural boost from the BIOS. After hours of attempts, 
I was not able to get the 2700X to run stable within reasonable temperatures at anything more than the natural boost, which came to 4 GHz across all cores. I should also note that I lost some RAM stability at 3200 MHz with my Trident Z and have had to run it at 2933 MHz. Granted, it isn't BDI RAM. Luckily, I was in possession of some 3200 MHz Flare X I could use to test the difference between RAM speeds. So here are those results. So that you can run the same tests and compare, I'm using several free, trusted benchmarks, three times each, and averaging the score, starting with Cinebench R15. And the results here aren't very surprising. With the overclocked 1700 far outperforming the stock result, and the 2700X showing the expected improvement above that, with a small but measurable difference between RAM speeds. In 3D Mark's Time Spy benchmark, the overclocked 1700 produced a much higher CPU score than the stock run, however the overall score didn't see much change, while the 2700X brought an impressive increase to the CPU and overall score, with a larger than expected difference between RAM clocks. In PC Mark 10, a benchmark designed to test desktop and workstation power, we see huge steps upward as we increase clock speeds on the processor, but only small gains with the RAM clock variation. In superposition, the results got a little confusing, so I ended up running it five times, and they were consistent in showing a decrease in score at 1080p extreme as the clock sped up. As for a reason this happened, it is beyond me, however, I believed it was worth including in these results. I also ran the in-game benchmark from Far Cry 5, and they were also a little unexpected. Run at 1440p high preset, I saw a decrease in FPS with the 1700 overclocked and similar results between the stock 1700 and 2700X with outcomes of the RAM speed tests ending within margin of error. So when it comes down to an opinion on whether or not the upgrade is worth it, unless you're working with a high-end motherboard and need to have the extra 300 to 700 megahertz. There is no reason to move from the 1700 series to the 2700 series. The upgrade is just not worth the cost. In fact, I would go so far as to say if you're building a new PC, you might even want to consider the R7-1700 and a B350 or even X370 motherboard to save well over $100 and get nearly the same performance as long as you plan on overclocking. Uh, you can then consider moving to the next talk, uh, as in the theoretical 3700 series, which should still work with the older motherboards if AMD is to be relieved. The 2700X is most definitely an incredible piece of tech, but it feels to me like a, a stepping stone that may not have been necessary. Now, as always, go ahead and hit click that subscribe button and notification bell. Uh, if you like this video, give it a like, and if you didn't, well, I'm sorry you got teased by all the neighbor kids. I'm Eat Popsicle from the Prodigal PC, and I shall speak to you when I return.